Hello everyone. Given the amount of questions I've received over the past few months relative to this subject, I figured that a good topic for today would be alchemy. Alchemy is a term which covers many philosophical traditions, which span over four millennia across several continents. Simply, alchemy is the art form of liberating something from its fixed physical properties. Those of you who have been watching my segment understand that by fixed, we are just using a term to explain something which is got finite properties. In reality, there is nothing in this physical dimension that is fixed. These physical laws which we see are an agreed upon set of perceptions. Many of us who have heard of alchemy are familiar with the concept of turning an ordinary metal such as lead or such as iron into gold. That is really only the surface of alchemy. That is taking something which you would think has fixed properties, it can't be anything other than what it is, and turning it into another substance. Like other sciences, early alchemists used scientific processes, techniques, that could be replicated in a lab. But unlike other sciences, you cannot separate the scientific process of alchemy from the hermetic principles and from spirituality. Those principles and spiritual truths are the basis upon which alchemy stands. It was believed that without learning the non-physical, spiritual principles and truths, there would be no way of understanding the physical truths and physical properties and thus transcending them so as to turn something like an ordinary metal into a precious metal like gold. This is why it is impossible to separate alchemy from spiritual principle. In other words, there would be no hope of you transcending the fixed properties of the physical dimension so as to transform an ordinary metal into gold without gaining access to the higher truths of this universe through spiritual practice and mastery. Alchemy cannot so easily be written off as primitive science when you realize that the practical applications of alchemy has made a wide array of contributions to medicine and the physical sciences. In fact, it is the origin of modern science. For example, alchemists sought to arrange information on substances so as to clarify and anticipate the products of their chemical reactions. This classification and organizing of substances resulted in the early conceptions of chemical elements and the first rudimentary periodic table. The alchemist Robert Boyle is credited as being the father of chemistry. Iatra chemistry emphasizes the medical application of alchemy. And it was the study of alchemy that influenced Isaac Newton's theory of gravity. Alchemists made contributions to the chemical industries of the day as well. Ore testing and refining finds its roots in alchemy, metalworking, production of gunpowder, ink, dyes, paints, cosmetics, leather tanning, ceramics, glass manufacture, preparation of extracts, liquors, etc. All of these things I've just listed find their roots in alchemy. Modern-day enthusiasts of alchemy have split alchemy into two parts, the practical physical application and the esoteric philosophical portion of alchemy. Herein lies the very problem. You cannot be practicing true alchemy unless both of these aspects are fused. Herein lies the lesson not only for alchemists but for all sciences. You cannot truly master anything if all you are addressing is the physical, chemical, molecular 
particle aspect of an object. If you truly wish to master that aspect, you must also master the non-physical, what we call the spiritual aspect of anything. It is, after all, the non-physical, the spiritual aspect, which the chemicals, molecules, and particles, which we associate with physical reality, are an extension of. When you do this, you understand that physical laws are not fixed. Physical properties are not fixed. Instead, they are agreed upon tendencies. The physical reality must follow the blueprint of the higher realities. A blueprint, such as a thought, is what defines what something in the physical dimension will become. It must follow suit. So if you are able to access the higher dimensions and alter the blueprint, the physical reality must change to fit the blueprint. This is what we're doing anytime we use energy healing. Energy healing is a healing modality which belongs to the class of alchemy. Because when you shift something, because you have shifted your mind about that something, you have shifted the blueprint and the body must follow suit. When a healer walks into the room and they visualize the state which they want the body to line up with, the body must line up with that visualized state. The great work of alchemy is usually characterized by four stages. Each of these stages is represented by a color. Negredo is the first, which means a blackening or melanosis. It is representative of putrefaction and decomposition, where ingredients had to be cleansed and cooked extensively. Internally, this represents a kind of spiritual death and the confronting of one's own shadow aspect. Albedo, which means a whitening or leucosis, it represents the washing away of impurities, where the physical object, such as an ingredient, is to be purified and divided into two opposing principles. Internally, this represents regaining the original purity and receptivity of the soul, washing away the ashes to find the soul. The third principle, citritas, a yellowing, or xanthosis. This refers to transmutation, the actual turning of a subject, such as an ingredient, into its highest state, such as silver into gold. Internally, this represents awakening, becoming a manifestation of the soul, becoming a walking embodiment of the soul, rather than a muted reflection of it. This is a process of turning. The fourth and final principle, rubido, a reddening, or iosis. Rubido refers to the end state, alchemical success, the achievement of the perfect state, the final state of perfection of any subject, such as an ingredient, into its exalted state. It can be interpreted as achieving enlightened consciousness and the total fusion of spirit and matter. This stage is often represented by the symbol of the phoenix. As you can see, based on these four principles which I've just shared with you, alchemy goes much, much further than just the physical process of transforming something from its fixed physical properties into another physical attribute, into another physical substance. Alchemy also applies to the process of you turning yourself into the perfected state. Each one of these processes which you would take to create something chemically from one thing into another is representative of what you would do in your own life if you are trying to transform yourself from your ordinary fixed physical self into your exalted state, an enlightened being. So you see the practice of alchemy goes much, much further than just transforming ordinary metals into precious metals. It goes much further than trying to find the elixir, which is the healer of all ailments. It goes much further than trying to find immortality. It is the practice of creating your entire reality. 
The alchemists in the distant past were very hesitant to share the number one highest esoteric principle in alchemy. But the world is ready to hear it now. It is that thought creates reality. It is that the mind is the thing which limits a physical object to its fixed properties. And so, liberating the mind through spiritual practice means liberating all that the mind perceives. And so you see, the ultimate alchemists were beings such as Jesus who could turn water into wine and walk on the surface of the water. But for them, it was not about turning water into wine or walking on water or turning an ordinary metal into gold. Alchemy was the practical application of the truth that you create all of it, your entire reality and even the perception that your reality is reality. All people are alchemists. Most are just unaware that they are doing it. Your mind is creating the construct of this reality. Your physical brain is perceiving that construct. Your organs of perception are arranging this reality for you. It is a learning hologram. Alchemy is much, much more than the process of turning something like water into wine. It is the process of understanding that your mind is doing all of this. If you change what you're thinking about, your reality must also follow suit. When this becomes a conscious type of process, then you will be creating the reality you live in. Then you are free. And so again, I want to leave you this week with something to think about. It is one of the oldest alchemical philosophies and principles of all time. Alchemy can be defined as the conscious, intentional process of transmutation, purification, and perfection of fill in the blank. The principle I want to leave you with is this. There can be no external alchemy without there first being internal alchemy. Have a good week.